Hello, welcome back. Today I want to show a few miscellaneous but important tasks uh, in this project. Uh, the first thing I have up here is applying the decals to my polycarbonate aero panels. So I have a bottle of water there that I just put one drop of dish soap in. Uh, you'll see why in a little bit. Uh, there are actually a fair number of guides for doing this online. Uh, I've read a few of them. Though, I still had a little bit of trouble, so I guess I didn't read them in as much detail as I should have. But, yeah. Um, so, all the polycarbonate sheets that I cut earlier, those are all the aero panels. They need decals applied to look authentic and be pretty and stuff. Um, so, I ordered those decals on just a big sheet of eight arrows altogether. Uh, did a rough cut into squares. Um... And then I'll do a finer cut for actually applying to the panels. I had planned to cut the um, cut the things on those two by threes, but then I realized that was a stupid idea. And a cutting board is a tool that exists exactly for that sort of job, so I get one of those instead. <laughs> so at the edge of each one of those arrow panels that I have, um, that's just one of eight there. Uh, I've put some crop marks that I could just barely see. So I lined them up with a ruler and cut along two of the edges uh, exactly to start out. Then once it's stuck onto the panel, I'll cut the other two edges much more exactly and sort of recut the ones that I cut there in case they stuck out a little bit. Um, if I make a mistake in the other direction and they they don't quite come to the edge of the panel, then I just kind of have to deal with it. I'll have a, have a clear space at the edge of it, which isn't too big a deal. A couple of them got that uh, after I finished this process, but it's not too bad. So the soapy water goes onto the panel. I wasn't quite sure how much to use. This was the first one of these I tried to apply, so I make a lot of mistakes here. Towel's very handy because this gets kind of wet because water's being sprayed all over the place. So the first thing I try is to have the panel just sitting on the table, and then I try to stick the decal onto it from the top. But this goes terribly, <laughs> and I just about ruined this. Um, fortunately, I don't actually, but yeah, it was it was not not a very good time at the at the start. This was actually slightly nerve wracking because I had to figure out what I was doing while using my. I basically had only one shot with each, with each one of these decals unless I needed to, uh, unless I was going to actually reorder them, which I didn't want to do. <laughs> so I had to get it right, right away and learn, not make mistakes that would actually ruin any of my materials. Fortunately, it all worked out. So I messed up a few times there, got kind of frustrated and decided, hmm, that is probably not the best way to do that. So instead, I try flipping the thing over putting it down on the table, and then applying the panel to the decal. Uh, still didn't have a very good plan for lining it up. I was just trying to just trying to get the top and left sides as I'd cut the thing on just right, but touch it at all and it sticks and, you know, this was not the best way to do it. It eventually kind of works though. So I got it on. It's aligned reasonably okay. So all that soapy water that was sprayed in between the decal and the panel now needs to come out. And the normal way to do that is to use a credit card or something similar uh, to just sort of squeegee it out this way. This card is uh, was used for credits at an arcade I used to go to that had an in-the-groove machine in it, but sadly, that machine disappeared. <laughs> Some bubbles are stubborn and don't want to come out. This is a process that needs to be done slowly and carefully, and it is fairly time-consuming. Like, this whole activity is just something to be done in a quiet space when there's nothing else pressing happening. So the, the decal I just applied is transparent. I have another white piece of adhesive vinyl that goes over top of it to make it more opaque and give it a white backing, which will eventually be lit up by LEDs behind the panel. Also, there's water everywhere. That's why I have a towel. <laughs> For this first one, for some reason, I decided to cut the um, the decal before applying the white vinyl, which is totally unnecessary, but it's just what I did here. 
So I get a more exact cut of that, get rid of all the corners, all the other edges that are protruding. And it ends up looking like something that I guess I don't bother showing. <laughs> anyway, here's the white vinyl. This one's simpler because it doesn't have to be lined up. It's all just one solid color. It's a little bigger than the thing I'm sticking it to, so I can just plunk it down there. Get my finger stuck to it a few times because I'm trying to reposition it for some reason. <laughs> Spray with water. More water is better, as I learned as I went along this process. That's still not nearly as much as I used for the last several. I just you really want to soak it very thoroughly is what I found. So just drop that on, go through the same squeegee process with the card. I don't show this whole process, it's fairly lengthy. Um, but yeah, it would just take too long to show the whole thing. It's kind of fun, but also a little frustrating when bubbles get trapped in the middle and there's not too much you can do about them unless you want to work with them for a long time, just slowly moving them to the outside. So now I do another cut of the white vinyl. I did this in one continuous piece. <laughs> so that all comes out. And that's a finished panel. So weird thing. When I first applied these, they looked totally okay. Then once they sat for like a few minutes, all these white spots in the middle started appearing and it looked kind of terrible. I was worried that I'd ruined the whole thing. But somehow it just fixed itself after sitting for a few days. I guess it somehow dried or like the stuff worked its way. I, I don't know how that works, but by some magic, the terrible looking panels uh, ended up not looking terrible after just sitting for a while. So here's a later um, application of one of these when I knew what I was doing a little better. Uh, so I've already cut it. Instead of aligning it the way I did before, what I do is, well, use a lot more water for one thing on both sides. Then I get up and put it sort of to the side, and then I'm looking at the edge uh, on the right from the camera's perspective. So I'm lining that up with the top, and then also lining up the side that's right against the decal. So then once all those are in just the right place, I can just sort of roll it downward and get it in exactly the right spot. Just like that. I tried a few other things to improve that process, but that was pretty much the best, uh, best I could do, and it worked out decently well. All the water out of that one, dry it off. White vinyl, same thing, just spray, spray, drop, and squeegee. When using more water, <laughs> stuff like that happens. You get the bubbles to the edge and it just kind of squirts out like crazy, so it's important to do this in a place where getting water all over the place is not a problem. And keep a towel on hand. <laughs> so here I'm cutting both the um, the decal and the vinyl at the same time. So that made, uh, made a lot more sense to do that way, because there's just no reason to do a second cut in between the two applications. So this was the last of the first four arrows I applied this to. Um, just like a few days ago, I finished doing all the rest, but this is kind of old footage. All done. That's what they all looked like. <laughs> so moving on to something else. Um, I have a square of metal here and one of my stationary panels. So the metal needs to be wrapped around the wood there. I'm marking out the corners so that I can cut them out. Um, and then the sides will be hammered down to try to get it just the way it needs to be. This is kind of a tricky process. I'm going to cut just far enough. And then from the other side. And then the metal sort of bends one way or the other just due to the way the shears work. 
I wasn't quite sure how best to handle that. You can see that's visibly bending down in the front. So I just kind of try to cut, cut carefully, deal with the bend somehow. I try to reverse it just by pressing it against wood there. If I had done that with the little scrap of metal that I uh, cut out, it would have worked better. That's what I ended up doing for the last several of these once I, once I got the process down. So anyway, cut out another corner. I tried flipping it over to try to get the bend to go a better way. It kind of worked. I mean, it meant th those would both go the same way, but then I couldn't see the, the pencil mark that I had made because that was only on one side. But I could see the where I'd started the cut and then where the other cut ended, so that was enough of a reference point, if that makes sense. This is the first one of these that I did, so I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I was kind of figuring it out as I went along. I should have captured some footage of, the, like, the last ones I did, because then I knew exactly what I was doing, and they went really quick. <laughs> so I lined those two corners, get some clamps on the, on the things to hold them together. Then I mark out the other two corners to cut them off. For the last of these, I just sort of set the wood on top of the metal, marked all four corners at once, and then cut them afterward, that it worked fine. This is another situation where I'm between the light and my work area. I should have had better lighting for this. So now that that's cut, uh, I need to drill into it. Uh, this, right, so what you're seeing here is much later footage after I've worked out the process. Uh, this is after I got kind of fast at this, because my first, the first footage I captured for this was just me messing around, not figuring out what to do very quickly. Uh, so this is actually a different piece of metal and wood. Uh, I'll talk about the different metal in a moment. Something kind of interesting happened with it, but anyway. Um, so what I'm doing here, I already have uh, half-inch marks from each corner uh, on that thing. So I know where to hammer and drill. I really like using that tool to uh, to put an indentation for drilling. It It helps a lot. The metal can take a bit for the drill bit to get through sometimes. So I drill a hole there, clean up the sawdust, take off the clamps, clean up the sawdust that got between the metal and the wood, because I, I want them to be flush together. And then I put a screw in uh, on that hole where uh, the hole I just drilled. Now these are not the actual screws that are going to be going into the um, into these things when it's in the pad. I'm going to use, um, the current plan is to use wood screws and join that to the frame below it. Uh, wood screws, the wood screws that I have have flat heads, so I'm going to have to go through a countersinking process for this too. Um, that I have not done yet, so that'll kind of be its own thing. Right, so I lined up the opposite corner, uh, put the clamps on, tighten the screw down more, so now I can drill the other corner. The reason I'm doing opposite corners here is just so that everything is lined up properly as early as possible. Uh, once I have two screws in on opposite corners, then the other two holes are a little easier to drill worry-free, worry because I don't have to worry about the, the wood and metal drifting out of alignment. Still just freehanding the drill. I've actually ordered a tool that kind of um, gives me sort of like a portable drill press. It's It basically attaches to the drill and gives me a, a flatter surface so I can drill straight down. But that one's not here yet. Um, these holes don't matter tremendously. I can kind of re-drill them, and I will be re-drilling them. Um, 
to put these in the real positions because the screws that are going in are much longer and attached to another piece on the bottom. Yeah, these screws that I'm putting in now are just, just for now. So corner number three, clean out sawdust as always. Put in screw. And I only need the three screws. I don't need the fourth one in here at all, actually. Just gonna drill the hole and then move on to the next step. The clamps there help keep the metal close to the wood. That's why I'm still bothering with them, even though the um, even though the things won't drift out of alignment. They don't do a perfect job, but they they do an okay job. So now that those holes are drilled, um, I've taken out one of the screws, clamped everything down uh, so that the closer part to me is not screwed in, and I'm just using a rubber mallet to try to bend down the edges so that the whole metal piece wraps around the piece of wood. So here's something I discovered about the metal that I have. Um, well, let me talk about this first. Uh, the technique I used here was just to start gently, go back and forth so I'm not bending one part more than the rest. Just try to do as even a job as, of it as I can. Get down here to the bottom. Get the metal as much against the wood as I can. So the first two of these I did went super well. Just with this hammering process, I was able to get the metal almost perfectly flush with the wood, which surprised me because the test panel that I had wrapped, uh, I showed this a few videos ago, I think, uh, it was just a piece of trash uh, at this point. I wanted to make all the mistakes with this that I needed to make to understand the process. That one did not wrap very well. Like, I could not get the metal bent far enough because it would spring back too much. But yeah, so the first two of these that I did um, worked super well. And it took me a little while to figure out why. Um, so right, I have two clamps in the front holding that piece of wood on to hold the metal down against the wood. Then the other clamp on the side to keep the, the whole thing from sliding around too much. Yeah, you can see how, how that went. It's bent out just a little bit. Uh, anyway, at this point, right, I have to do this four times. I move the screw from here to the other corner. Clamp everything down and repeat the process. So anyway, what had happened was that I bought two different types of sheet metal <laughs> and did not realize it until I had worked with them for a while and understood the nuances of the differences. So the first two of these I did were aluminum, I'm pretty sure. Um, aluminum will happily take a 90 degree bend with a hammer in this sort of arrangement and can get fairly decently flush with the metal, uh, with the metal, with the wood. Uh, so that was great, but then once I got to my other sheet of metal that I had cut up, I noticed it felt a little different, it looked just slightly different. And when I hammered it down, it would not sit flush with the wood. So that stuff was the zinc-plated steel that I thought I was using for everything. But it turns out that some of my metal is aluminum, <laughs> and it behaves differently. So the steel takes a little more work to get at a 90 degree angle. I do have a solution for that. It's not a great one, but it sort of is functional. That I'll show once I'm done with this process. So clamps are back down. Side number two gets hammered, just like number one. That poor rubber mallet <laughs> has taken so much damage from doing this. Like, little bits of rubber are sort of flaking off as I do this because, I mean, it's kind of hard on the thing. There's sharp edges on the metal, sometimes it catches the corner and gets a big gouge out of it, but that's okay. It's a tool, it's doing its job. If it takes damage while it does it, then that's just using it up for its intended purpose. I kind of check underneath to see just how close to the, the wood I'm getting. Do the best I can, but... The steel has too much spring in it to take the angle just like this. This isn't a huge amount of work, but my hand did get tired after doing like five of these in a row. I still have a few left downstairs to do, 
uh, that I haven't gotten to yet, but I've gotten a decent number of them done by now. This happened just today as of the recording. So move everything around, bend the next one. Repeat one more time. So I need three screws for the drilling part, two screws for this part. The screws just keep everything aligned as well as possible, so I keep them in wherever I can. And there we go. That's what the panel looks like. So I show just how well it wrapped around. It's not the best. If you look carefully at the edges, you can see uh, what the angle is like. So that does not sit nearly as flush as I would like it to be. But I do come up with a solution. It's, like I said, it's not the best, but it kind of works. So I took the metal off the wood, got it on its own, and just sort of gave it a few smacks with the hammer like this. Now I did just have to eyeball this and hope I was getting it to the right angle. Um, I've only done this with a couple of my panels so far, so I'm not sure what the right process would be for doing this perfectly. But this is good enough, I guess. Like, if I had a metal bending brake that I could use um, on this shape of metal, then it'd be pretty great. But I don't, and I'm not sure how that would work. Like, it would have to be the exact width of that, since since the other two sides are... Um, all four sides are bent the same way. Another thing I thought about was if I had an aero panel where the... The edges were cut at a little bit of an angle, so I could just hammer it past 90 degrees. That would work well, too, but I don't have that. So it's a little harder to fit it on now. Oops. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's because those are bent inward. Ideally, those would be bent slightly past 90 degrees inward, so that the, the, spring in the, the springiness in the metal would be fighting to push into the wood but it would be a little hard to get the wooden panel in there um, if that were the case. It'd be possible. Uh, I might do that at some point. But as you can see, that's much better. So that's how I improved that. All right, sorry if the audio quality is a little worse here. I'm just using my camera's microphone because that was a lot more convenient. I figured handheld would be the way to do this. So what I've done here is I have a, um, a partial test assembly of the Player 2 pad. Basically, I just laid down the base plate. Um, player 1 base plate is there. Player 2 just happened to be closer, so I grabbed it first. Um, and put down all the components where they would fit without fastening them together in any way, just to see where my problems were. So I discovered a few, definitely. Um, but also, this is a lot of the stuff just kind of works. I only bothered, bothered to put in one aero panel. So let me take this down piece by piece and show you what's going on with it. So here's the wrapped center panel. That's the only one that I've had the chance to wrap in metal so far. If I take that out... Boy, it is hard to hold this thing. It really wants to zoom in close. Uh, underneath that is all these little panel risers. These are thin plywood. They elevate the panel just enough. Um, with them in place, this thing matches the height of these pretty much exactly. Uh, so let me talk about those center panel out of the way. Um, at the corners, at all four corners of each arrow, there's going to be these triangle bracket holders with the triangle brackets on top of them. I have this only partially screwed in here. But uh, this piece um, kind of holds the, the panels in place this way. This piece holds them in downward. Um, so those are what go in the corners. Then underneath this panel, I have the sensors with some padding on top. I didn't, I haven't taped it down yet, but that would go on top of the sensor brackets. Uh, sensor brackets on top of the sensors. These would, of course, plug into the the wiring once I get that figured out. Um, and there is a piece missing in here. So in each one of these corners, there's supposed to be a corner stopper. I've talked about that a couple of times. Um, that is a really tricky piece. I tried a whole bunch of stuff to figure out what to do with it. I found some plywood that's that, if I double it up, is about the appropriate thickness um, to exactly match the height of sensor, bracket, and padding. Or actually just sensor and bracket, because those things get their own padding. But yeah, there will be another piece in the corner here once this is all done. 
These will be screwed into place with spacers so they can sort of freely move up and down a little bit. Um, to hold the sensors in place uh, this way, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to use these little dowel rod things. So I'll just drill a hole like here and here and stick these down into there pretty deep so that they only protrude just, just a tiny little bit. Uh, just so that the sensor doesn't get a chance to slide out this way. I don't think it's going to be a problem for it to slide around this sort of way, but that remains to be seen. Like, it'd be easy enough to stick another dowel rod here, although on this particular piece of wood I'm awfully close to the edge, but I could find a way to do it. But like, over here, I have to deal with the wires. On real arcade pads, there are these rubber channels that go underneath this, and they sort of sit inside them, but I looked at a lot of suppliers who claim to have them, but all of them say they're out of stock permanently and they're never getting more. So I have to improvise another solution. Uh, that's not entirely true. One just didn't reply to me. All the DDR sensor uh, channel suppliers say they're out of stock, so I'm guessing the new DDR machines don't use those pieces. I tried to contact Undamiro to get some Pump It Up versions, because these are Pump It Up sensors, so it would be... I'm pretty sure they fit in the DDR sensor channels, um, but the Pump It Up sensor channels would fit better, I guess. <laughs> um, but they never replied to me. Uh, their website is in Korean and has some very bad English on it, and I don't think they... Um, I don't think they're set up to just sell to individuals. Basically, it's for, well, for arcade owners to buy spare parts and stuff. Anyway, so the other five stationary panels, nothing else too interesting going on underneath them. Under all this is, let's see if I take some of these off. Boy, this is hard to do. My camera is almost out of battery. Uh, so if I take some of these off, you can see the structure underneath a little bit. I have these long vertical uh, 2x3s running all the way up and down, and then the shorter horizontal ones bracing it that way. And that's also what the sensors and things sit on top of. This, these pits in here for the four arrow panels are going to have uh, LEDs in them. My camera is telling me it has no battery, so this could cut off at any moment. <laughs> Let's see if I can go quick. On the back here, I discovered a problem. I have these three cover pieces, which are supposed to go around the, the handle joint bracket, the thing the bar attaches to. However, when the machine shop manufactured this bracket, it turns out they didn't quite do it exactly to my specifications. And these two posts are slightly farther apart than in my diagram. So that throws off all this stuff. Basically, like, oops, like this piece would fit cleanly there, but then over here there's a big gap. And then this one just doesn't, doesn't fit where it needs to go at all. Uh, and I think I have a problem with the edge corner here anyway. But everything else seems good, so I just need to redo these pieces to accommodate the slightly wider post pitch for those. And then I should be good. Alright, let me turn this off before my battery totally dies. Alright, it's a few days later. My battery is recharged. Um, I've messed with this test assembly just a little bit more. I wanted to talk about a few things with it before I take it down. Um, so, I got all the rest of the edge finish around the edges here. Um, so, all these little pieces... Uh, that's sitting... Is that on top of it? Okay, yeah. So all those go around the outside. These are going to be sanded and painted, and they'll be the outside surface. I'm not going to wrap them in metal. I pushed this one out just a little bit, so this piece will fit here. I realized I can actually totally salvage this piece if I just trim a little bit off here and a little bit off here, um, a little bit more off here than here, because I need to accommodate for... Um, since this is, is a diagonal piece of the same width as... Um, as the uh, the ones next to it. You can see it sticks out a little bit more there. There's kind of a, a jut inward. I accounted for that with the way that I spec'd out this piece right here, because that's a little bit inward from those. But I, when I originally cut this, I failed to account for it there. But yeah, I can just cut out a little more of this, a little of this, and that piece will fit fine. Do the same thing for this one over here, but this one in the center is still going to have to be redone, since it, uh, since I can't add wood to it. <laughs> I need to cut a new one that's just slightly wider. Anyway, so that's all working just fine. I want this to be flat, so I'll do that for now. Uh, still haven't quite gotten around to wrapping any more panels. I've cut the, um, the things that I'll be wrapping around them. All nine of the other ones are right down there. I'm going to do that like immediately after this. 
Um, let's see, there were a few other things I wanted to talk about. Right, these metal pieces are going to go on top like this. This one I can similarly salvage by just trimming a little off here and a little off here. Um, I haven't figured out the exact amounts yet, but yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of stuff up front here that I didn't cover. There's a, a piece of plywood here that just elevates and and a riser, just the same as everything else, because arcade pads have a little bit of extra room in the front. And I wanted to mimic that. Uh, so one of those metal cover pieces, of course, will plate over the front of it. I have two that go down the sides here, and then three pieces for the back. And then the stationary panels are all wrapped, so that's how all the metal on top works. Uh, I have applied decals to the other four arrow panels, so I have all eight of those done now. Um, this piece here I haven't talked about too much and haven't dealt with the way I need to. Uh, this is going to be, this is called a frame joint bracket. It attaches to this side of one pad and that side of the other one and holds them together. There's going to be another one in the back here. Um, and the entire pad will be sitting on top of these casters and these leg levelers. These are official DDR leg levelers. I was able to buy those. Um, so I need to drill a big hole in the bottom in four corners and mount that to it. I do have a little bit of a worry about uh, pad rigidity. I'm hoping that like if it's supported in just the four corners and I'm standing in the center that it won't like um, bow in the middle. I don't think it will. Like, it's packed pretty tight full of lots of very thick wood. Um, so I don't think that'll be a problem, but I'm hoping. I mean, worst case, I guess I can just let it sit on the floor like it is now. It's not on anything at the moment. But I'd rather have it elevated a little bit, just for authenticity and easier moving and stuff. Um, right, so I said there wasn't anything interesting other than under these panels, but I forgot that under this one... Oop, Actually, that's not true. Under this one, since this is the Player 2 pad, well, I don't have it in here now, but the idea is that the um, the interconnect for the wiring is going to go through here and connect to the Player 1 pad over here, and then on the upright panel of the Player 1 pad is where all my USB wiring and stuff is going to go. So there's going to be a USB port on the front here-ish, um, which connects to the... Uh, USB interface. I don't, I don't have it here, but anyway, then wires just run sort of all over the pad through wire channels that I need to cut to each one of the arrows for the LEDs and the sensors. Focus, camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think that's... Oh, wait, no. One more thing. Um, so I talked about that I was missing a piece, or maybe I think I talked about this. I was missing a piece in the corner. Um, and I've actually made some now. These are just made with a handsaw. Uh, this was a major pain to make, because uh, they're tiny little pieces out of very thin plywood. If I double them up, I get just the right height that pretty much exactly matches this. So these two are at the same level now. The sensor and brackets and those. Mm, approximately. That's just slightly shorter. Oh well, I don't think it's a problem. So those will get the same... This is hard to do, and I'm not aiming the camera very well. Ah! <laughs> anyway, this is a mess. Um, I'm going to take it down shortly and do it for real. Uh, bottom of that ply plywood looks terrible. But yeah, there will be something like that. In the corners. Over here. Um, yeah, panel will sit on top of that. It'll have the padding in the corners and the padding on here. So that'll hold it sort of up against these, and it should be just right. <laughs> I'm hoping. There's probably going to be a lot of tweaking uh, to make sure the sensitivity is right and the things don't wobble too much and all that. But anyway, that's the state that I'm at now.